when you truly begin to express yourself authentically, that which needs to find you, finds you. You create spaces where the people, the experiences, and the opportunities that literally align and are looking for you go, I see you. When you don't express authentically, then the very things that you are like, man, I wish, I wish they can't find you. You're not putting out an expression that's your true and authentic self. So when you come into certain spaces and you are moving uh, in a particular way where you think it'll be accepted, or you're moving in a particular way where they said that's what that space needs, you're, you're literally putting your authenticity to the side and saying, if, if I conform to what you need, then that's my ticket in, right? But what I'm learning is that the very ticket that you need to get in is you being your authentic self because once you're your authentic self, you don't have to compete to create, right? You don't have to compete to create. In other words, you don't compete, you create. I love that idea that says, someone says, man, how do I, how do I stay competitive in a certain arena or a certain space? I can't be competitive with someone who is authentically themselves. I can't be competitive with someone who is genuinely expressing from a place where it's inside of them where you say, I never heard someone say it like that before in the way in which they said it. Like, you have a signature on your voice. You have a signature with your spirit. You have a signature with your smile, with your energy, with, with the way in which you see things. That's you. Every person that walks in a room, that's them. But what happens for most of us is we get... Something in us goes, nah, you know what, I need to do X, Y, or Z. And when I become X, Y, or Z, that's when that will open the opportunity for me instead of reverse engineering and going, you know what, if I originally express, if I, if I find out what is within me and express that, that which is for me will find me. That's what I mean when I say authenticity wins. Right? I'm saying it from a space because I found out in my own journey when I go into spaces and I go, you know what, what does Isaac feel is right in that moment? Not what does that person need. What would Isaac need? Like literally, what would I need in that moment? What, what, what energy would I need? What way would I need to bring myself to someone says, I see how you're moving. I see how you're stepping. I like that authenticity. I've never felt that before because I can tell that you're being you. I might agree with you, I might disagree with you, but I respect you because you're being you. There's something that's creatively free in that space. And I've come to a space in, in, in my own creative journey where I'm like, man, Isaac, make sure that you stay authentically true to what you feel in the moment. That's all that, that's all that is being asked of you, that's all that is being, literally, that, that, that's all that you need. We talked about stewarding your gift. We talked about what happens when you understand that the gift that you've been given isn't yours, but it's actually you to be a vessel so that that gift can be pushed and pulled and, and moved and expressed and illustrated through you. What happens? What, what happens when I understand that I can use my gift to inspire others and I say that I'm going to stand in this space as a, as a vessel of inspiration? The thing that immediately happens is my ego goes to the side and now I move in a space where I am responsible for taking the gift that I've been given and expressing it to the best of my ability. Perfection is not needed, but realness is. Perfection isn't asked of me, but realness is. That's what we see in each other. When we go, I, I don't know that person. I don't know their journey. I don't know what they've come from. I've never had a conversation with them in my life, but I know authenticity when I see it. I know realness when I see it. And so if you look at your gift, if we look at our gifts as things that have been given to us so that we become the vessel through which they can be expressed, we operate differently. Right now we, we operate with, this, with, the, with, the, with an intention that says, in what way can I be of service to those that are around me? And so the very things that I'm looking for, the very things that I seek, will now seek me because I'm moving in a space where I said, I could be me. I can be me. I can walk 
into this space and really truly be me. You know how freeing that is? I don't know why it's so difficult to get to that space, but it is. But sometimes we just need reminders that your authenticity, your true expression of whatever you feel, the way in which you see things, your talents, your strengths, that, that's been given to you. How do you go from gift to skill? Gift has been given to you. Skill is when you take the gift and you cultivate it. You hone it and you honor it. You say, this has been given to me, now can I... Can I be like a sculpt, like a, like a, like an arch, like a sculpture? Can I can I sculpt? Can I create something from the from the from the canvas? Can I can I paint something new? Can I be an artist with this thing that has been given me, that has been given to me? That's what I think of when I think of the idea that your authenticity, whatever comes to you in that moment. Whatever comes to you in that moment, who you are, express who you are. There's truth in that. There's power in that. There's creativity in that. There's God in that. Stewarding that gift. It develops a, a different relationship with the gift. Right? You take away that this is my gift. This is my, I'm, I'm, and you go, wow, I've been given this gift. There's a, that, there's a difference. This is my gift. I've been given this gift. Mm -hmm. Stewarding the gift in the right way opens doors. Mm -hmm. Stewarding your gift in the right way opens doors.